There are four seats up for election, 11 strong candidates running. Uh, and this here is an opportunity to get to know the endorsed candidates a little more. Uh, either way, however the election turns out, it's going to be unprecedented change at the board level in the company. And it's all a, a, a strong, powerful reflection of the strong shareholder base we have, the passion we have. The company is doing great financially. Uh, we're working on a 100-year plan, and uh, a big part of that requires us to have a strong team with a thoughtful vision to, to come together and, and to really charge forward. Uh, and during this pandemic, it's forced us all to connect uh, virtually. So right now, uh, our intent here is to give a little snapshot of these candidates virtually. Uh, each of them has gone through the competition over the last few years to be, be part of the recruitment team uh, and the recruitment effort from the company. The company has driven a lot of change uh, at the board level, at the management level, and, and it's shown. Uh, what we haven't done very well, though, is to really just put on display the mechanics behind the scenes. Uh, each of these candidates has been interviewed, they've applied, they've interviewed at the committee level, they've interviewed at the full board level. They are seasoned, qualified applicants um, in their kind of careers and experience. Uh, and, they, and they bubble to the top uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, two of them on the screen now are sitting board members, uh, Barbara Blake and Morgan Howard. Uh, went through this process a couple of years ago. Uh, and it's just part of our duty to recruit the best. The board has a fiduciary duty to look out for the best interest of all the shareholders in the company. We have shareholders in all 50 states. Uh, this team here uh, is diverse. They, they, they are coming to us from different parts of the country right now, but we all have strong roots in the same country here in Southeast Alaska with the Clinton Haida Simshia. Uh, and this group has a, quite the resumes, but we're not really here to tout resumes. We're really here just to get a snippet of who they are uh, and, and to hopefully share with shareholders a little bit of uh, the reason why they bubble to the top in all these processes, uh, this recruitment process. Um, one thing I've taken to heart and have tried to share along the way for, for years is none of us, we're not entitled to these seats forever. And I know each of these candidates here share that feeling. They've got limited time here to serve. They've been serving for their entirety of their careers already. There are different stages in their careers. Uh, and, and we're looking to just have things come into alignment uh, and continue good work for the corporation. Uh, and if this group comes on, it's going to be unprecedented change, like I said, at the board level. Uh, Barbara Blake is a current sitting director. Uh, she's going to provide the questions here to the to the candidates. Morgan Howard, uh, business owner, is just wrapping up his first term on the board. Uh, and he's coming to us to, from Washington, but he's uh, got roots in Yakutat and Kodiak. Mike Roberts uh, is streaming from Colorado. But his roots are from Ketchikan uh, and Cloak. And he's a CEO, a longtime successful CEO, uh, and um, coming to us with a strong finance background and an MBA there. Uh, Lisa Lang is streaming from Heidelberg. Uh, a lot of us, especially those of us who you know live in Southeast, we, we know Lisa very well. Uh, and she, like some of us, took some time to go get those um, credentials and degrees and come back home. And she is fortunate to be hunkered down uh, back at her home there in Heidelberg. Some of us are jealous that she's uh, able to hunker down in her homeland so close. Uh, I'm hunkered down at the in our capital city uh, and able to get out on occasion to the water, um, but I'd much rather to be in the village. Uh, so we're thankful that some of our villages have this kind of internet connection. Uh, and we appreciate Lisa's uh, advocacy. She's a, she's a lawyer. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Angela Michaud, she, she's coming streaming from Anchorage. She's got roots in uh, Ketchikan and, and Huna. Uh, and you notice the doctor there, you know, she's not gonna be one to brag on herself uh, and none of these candidates will, but uh, I mentioned those credentials because that is the foot in the door uh, as far as recruitment processes uh, and uh, they, they can be executives anywhere really, uh, but they're choosing to try to come back home and serve uh, and serve shareholders in this capacity. They've got long resumes, strong credentials, but they are committed to our people uh, like many of us are. 
uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Barbara to help facilitate the conversation with these uh, board-endorsed candidates. So thank you, Barbara, for tuning in, and uh, it's good to see you. And um, I'm going to go on mute and hear from our candidates. How are you going to Joe? As Joe said, Wafal Girak Hineri Ang. Barbara Blake, um, my name is Wafal Girak. My English name is Barbara Blake. Um, and I am thankful to be here to um, help everyone out there get to know these candidates, these amazing candidates a little bit better. Um, with that, our first question, what do you think about the process you went through to get to the board endorsement? And why do you think you were selected? And we'll start with Lisa Lane. Need to unmute, Lisa. Hawa, hawa, Jada. Hawa, Chairman Joe. Harala is Kail Juice Kennedy Kang. I at the good in a log in Auckland is a. My Haida name is Kail Juice. My English name is Lisa Lang. And I am really, really, really happy to be here today. I wanted to be able to have the opportunity to let you meet my teammates and to meet uh, uh, my board members that we interact with. And I, I wanted you to really understand from my perspective, um, I am from Southeast and I've been in many working capacities. I practiced law in Anchorage for a while. I came home, I worked in Juneau. I did work with children um, who are now cultured, beautiful adults that I'm very proud of. There's so many roles that I've played. And when you come from a small community, it's all about reciprocity. What you give in your lifetime is how you're honored when they end your life. And I think that's a really important concept. I take what I've learned and um, try to be humble about it because, you know, humility is a really key factor in our culture. But I have to be able to get up and say that what I'm doing is um, part of the vision that I've had, this process we went through. That's what Barb asked the question. It was a very lengthy process. I've been vetted for jobs. I've had criminal background checks. I've had, um, I've never had a credit check done until this one. And that kind of cracked me up because I was like, oh good, good thing I pay my bills. But, um, but I really want you to know, I want our shareholders to know, the people who live outside of Alaska, um, if you're in Florida, Colorado, wherever you're at, I want you to know this was a very competitive process. And I'm very honored that, um, that I decided it, it was a decision on my part. Am I going to put my name in the hat? Am I at the place in my life where, where I can offer the time and, and the, um, the energy and, in a positive, good way? I told myself I no longer have time for petty arguments or for the jealousy and the, the insecurities that I've had to battle with the last 20 years in forming some really good relationships and took a lot of time. And I looked at Sea Alaska and I th said, yeah, I want to be part of that. I want to be a part of, of what I've already lived a very good life in obtaining, whether it was for language, whether it was for fighting for tribal courts, whether uh, I'm involved right now, I'm also a judge. I'm involved in developing um, tribal youth courts and our new youth advisor, um, Mike Gail Dammert, uh, Kayla is someone I work with. And so we're doing this visionary dynamic work that is going to help our future. And so does that fit in with who I am and what I do? Yeah, it does. And I also look at my teammates and I see that they have the ability to sit down and in this very crazy time that we live in today, we have to be able to do the work, the hard work it takes. And I think I'm sitting amongst peers that have had the challenges as I have, and they've also been very, very wise about how to maneuver forward. I don't waste my time anymore on pettiness, and I say it openly because we don't have time in this crazy virus. We have to move forward. So this process told me I competed heavily and, um, and I feel I earned that position with my education. 
I feel like I earned it with my dedication to my community, to my language, to my culture. And I believe that if this group is selected, if we are picked, I know that we can do some dynamic things because that's part of my vision. That's part of the work I do. I told our chairman, Joe, that um, I do hope I get elected because I don't know if I'm in your dream or if you're in my dream because this is what I've been doing in my life and I love the rewards when we learn how to be collectively moving forward. So that's, that, that wraps it up. I don't want to take credit for the way things used to be. I refuse to do that. I want to have you understand this was a different process and that um, it was very competitive and I'm very proud to represent you should I be elected. Hello. Hello, Jetta. Mm. Um, Dr. Michelle, what did, what did you think about the process you went through to get on the board? endorsements and why do you think you were selected? I am Dr. Angela Michaud and I um, believe that this was a, an amazing process to go through. It was um, over a month of um, getting packets and papers and interviews and um, the waiting process <laughs> to find out. Um, I think it was great, but I don't think it just started now. Um, I believe it started a long time ago. Um, I grew up in Ketchikan. Um, my maiden name was Pfeiffer. And, uh, you know, when I wrote for that Sea Alaska board or Sea Alaska scholarship, I wrote that I want to come back and give back to my community. And in that way, I wanted to come back to help with the health and healing of our people. And um, part of that is in the Maslow's hierarchy of need. You know, you need the food, you need the housing, you need the water to survive. And if people are staying in that survival mode, you can never move up to that next level. And so it's been my life goal. I'm a, a servant leader. And so working to help people um, move to the next step, help them in their health and healing, but also be in leadership. And so I ran for as an independent um, seven years ago. I had a little baby at that point. Um, she was only like six months old and I also had a three-year-old and that was a good race and it was difficult running as an independent. And I learned in that process some of the things I still w was needing to work on. And this year when it came up and someone asked if I was going to run and it made me stop and think. And I was like, is now, is now the time? Is the time now? And I said, yeah, it is. I have my youngest is just graduated kindergarten yesterday. <laughs> and so I don't have my babies at home. They're still young, but they understand the work that we do. And I think it's about family. And it's about the next generations, and it's about my kids' next generations. So I believe the time is now. Um, you know, I have the credentials that I've been in leadership. I've been on different boards. Um, I work on the Huna Heritage Foundation board. I also am on the Cook and Let Native Head Start board. So different boards that connect with the people. And then through my job, I work with people and tribes all the time. So I think being able to connect with people, build the relationships, build healthy families, and be able to listen and be there as a servant for others. That's really why I'm here and that's why I'm running. And Ashish, um, Mike Roberts, what did you think about the process to get the Sea Alaska endorsement? Um, why do you think you were selected? Well, I'll, I'll say this, you know, when uh, we had our first meeting among the four endorsed candidates you, you look to your left and you look to your right and you have lisa on one side and dr angela on the other and then morgan who i knew from um, having followed him into the clinton had a tribal business corp was like holy smokes batman why would why they select me right i mean there's some really talented folks um and i'm just really honored to be part of that um i, I say it's an interesting process i I, like Angela, had gone through this process once before, about two years ago, 
And I'll say that in the two, you know, I thought, wow, you know, I've done this before. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, not ready at all. I mean, the, the, the difficulty factors of, of this year versus two years ago, um, the board has really upped the, the, the kind of screen and vetting they've done for the candidates. And, and it was really kind of a, a fun process to make you think about, you know, really do a lot of self-reflection about why. And um, I have to say that uh, it, it was good. Um, it made you think about um, the, what motivates you to be part of this group. Uh, and for me, um, you know, I, I grew up in, in Ketchikan, um, you know, and I think that, and my family is from Powak, and I think, you know, when, you're, when you grow up that far away from Juneau, you always think, wow, you know, do they, do they hear me? Do they care? You know, that sounds like a 1980s pop song, but, um, you know, you're always wondering if, if you have to jump up and down and get more attention. And I'll say that, you know, even going to school in Washington State, you feel like you're even one more step removed than and in Colorado, and, and when you realize that, you know, half of our, our tribal members are outside of Alaska, um, and all of us are kind of wanting to be home and wanting to connect to our tribe and to see Alaska, I'm wondering if we're heard. I think that's where, where I thought I had uh, a place and a voice and, and a say um, in this process, and that I understand what it's like to be so far away from home and still want to be connected culturally and physically. And, you know, my yearly trips home don't get me that. But I think, you know, um, much like Lisa, you know, I was encouraged by my parents and my grandparents to go away and get education with the, with the clear expectation that I would come back and, and, and do good work for Thinkit and Haida and Simtian people. And I've spent my life doing work for other Indians. And, and in that process, you know, holding up, um, the, 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 the rich heritage that Alaska Natives have and, and make sure that we're included in those conversations at a national level along with our brothers and sisters from Hawaii. So I, I think it was, a, it was, a, it was a, you know, a very strong vetting process and it was intimidating and it's even more intimidating to be among such great um, team members. But um, I'm excited that um, you know, see Alaska's made a different way chosen a different way to, to go about this, and I'm flattered to be part of this slate. Thanks, Chief, Mike. Uh, Morgan, uh, how did you feel about the process? And why do you think you were selected? Well, I think you have to suck. Take what I had. Take what originally from Yakutat and Kodiak. And the process, I thought, was very thorough. I served on uh, two other boards, which Michael mentioned, one, Clinton and Haida Tribal Business Corp, and also a village corporation board. And as a director and on the nomination committees for those boards, I was involved in several CEO hires. The process for this selection was similar to a CEO hiring process. A, uh, a very thorough process where a committee goes through and interviews a lot of folks and then eventually makes it down so the finalists get the full board approval. I think the, the criteria set out uh, is good and you have to meet a lot of qualifications. Um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not just enough to be interested in and passionate about this. That's the minimum requirement. It's not just enough to, to have experience in business. It's not just enough to have experience and knowledge of your culture. Uh, you need all of those things. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a dynamic position above and beyond a lot of other corporations. So there's also the idea of fit and it, that one I see as and in this moment of time where the board is, what, what do they need? And I think um, the fit that they looked at me for was communications. I was uh, a communications vendor to Sea Alaska and many other native corporations, which is what I still do today. I have a, a communications company and I service um, native entities throughout Alaska and the Northwest. I think that was probably... Uh, one of the reasons why I was selected was because of the fit of being able to provide communication uh, expertise to the board. And also 
business experience with owning my own company and being involved in other business ventures from some entrepreneurial adventures to, to, to other long, long standing businesses. I think those were the two reasons um, why I was uh, selected. And, and I think the process was, was one that a lot of shelters don't know about, but um, they can, they can learn about it by going to see Alaska. It's all out there. The criteria I, I went through it previously before, I was selected to be a board endorsed candidate. And I thought at the end of it, that was really thorough. And I really liked, it wasn't me, but I liked who C. Alaska chose for the position. I thought I can see why that person was chosen there. They're really good. And I think that's going to move the company forward. So I think it's, uh, it serves the company very well at this moment in time. This company, like us as a people, we're in the middle of something now and we have to do what's best now to get us to the next place. Simultaneously, also thinking far ahead, like Sea Alaska does, working on a 100 year business plan, make decisions for today and also make decisions for the future as well. Thank you. Halak Benishchish, to everyone who just answered that question. Um, we're very thankful that, that you were all selected to, to be on this board slate. I know that Sea Alaska. Um, rigorous process. I, I know it wasn't easy because we went through it last year. Um, and there's a reason why all of you are sitting here today with us. It's not only to do with the pieces of paper that you provided us, but who you are as individuals, who you are as connected people to our Alaska Native way of being. So I'm thankful for all of you. Um, I'm going to start with Dr. Michelle for the next question. Uh, what is your vision for our communities, our shareholders, and Sea Alaska? Um, my vision for our communities uh, and for Sea Alaska is that we uh, have healthy people who can be sustainable for the next 200 years. You know, that our children have education, that our elders have housing and food, and that we um, know our culture and can be connected with our culture. Uh, I think we can, we have an opportunity, um, especially in Southeast for cultural tourism, where we have our own artists that sell their works and that we can teach them to do that, as well as jobs in um, construction, um, building housing for um, elders in and that we continue with scholarships both for vocational and for um, college level graduates but that we have a place for them to come back home um, that when we get them these educations that there's a place for them if they want to come back home that they can come back home and um, the most importantly is that there's sustainability in the company that we're making biz strong business choices that connect us to our cultural values as well as move us forward um, because if we aren't sustainable then we won't be here anymore and I want my children and my grandchildren's children to know wherever they decide to live that they could come home and if they wanted to come home they would be welcomed and that they could learn via these zoom meetings or technology how to weave cedar or carve or draw form line and that when they're doing that that they can feel connected and they could be living in France or Germany or anywhere in the world and I think that's important it'll draw us together and make us a stronger people um, I was on a, a conference call earlier today and you know they said just for the census only one percent of our of the United States right now is saying that they're Alaska Native American Indian we need to bring those numbers up. We need to make people say, yeah, I am native and I am on those things. So making us count, I wanna make us count and um, people should know who we are. And that's what I think. Ms. Chish for your message, Doctor. Uh, we're also thankful for the census little blurb there. That's important too. So hope everybody's filling those out. Um, we're gonna move to Mike. What is your vision for our communities, our shareholders in Sea Alaska? 
Yeah, I think, I think that's a good question. You know, um, this is a bit of background to that question. I, you know, as I, as I was finishing college, I always wondered why my grandfather and my father didn't speak up about all the injustice that was happening to them, you know? Um, and, and, it, and it took me a lot of reflection and learning to understand that, that they didn't have the economic luxury to speak out, that, that they had jobs that were so precarious um, that, that if they spoke up for their rights and of who they were, there was a good chance that they wouldn't have jobs and they wouldn't be able to feed their families. And, and, and I, you know, have come to recognize that the sacrifice that they've done, my grandfather and my father, for me to get an education and have economic opportunity and economic choices is, is so incredible. So when I look at, at, at what I think is very valuable or what I see as a vision for Sea Alaska is to provide our shareholders with that economic opportunity and that economic liberty to to be able to make those kinds of choices and, and make those kinds of stands for themselves and, and stick up for themselves and for their people and for the rights that, that, that we've been, even, even though that we've won them in courts, we don't win them in, in public opinion often, right? Um, I think that there's another, if there's a, a larger vision for Sea Alaska or, or for Alaska Natives in general. Um, you know, I always look at the, the end of the, the Declaration of Independence that says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I think that the most important word in there is not life, and it's not liberty, and it's not, it's not happiness. It's the and, right? My grandfather was, a, was, a, was an Indian, but when he went to Chamala Indian School, they didn't tell him he could be an Indian and something else. He could only be an Indian. When my father was uh, one grade away from being valedictorian at Kishikan High School, and had a grade change so he couldn't be, they didn't want him to be an Indian and valedictorian. That wasn't allowed, right? I get to be an Indian and a business person. Angela gets to be an Indian and a doctor. Lisa gets to be an Indian and a lawyer. I think and is an incredible word and it's a connector and it's, and, it's, and it's something that we should strive for. And, and, and so I find that, that inclusion, that the and something else to be a very important vision for who we are as Alaska Natives and who we are as Sea Alaska shareholders, and who we are as Sea Alaska, the corporation, and the board of directors. Oh, I'm nice. Beautifully said. Um, Morgan, what is your vision for our community, our shareholders, and Sea Alaska? Thank you for that, Michael. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. That was good. Uh, made me think. I, uh, I have thought about uh, what does success look like for Sea Alaska for, for many years. Uh, since, since I started working for Native Corporations in 1995, I had to come up with my own definition because what I thought was happening wasn't working. I even wrote a paper called, you know, dividends are not the, are, are, are not the, uh, what, what's successful for corporations. It's not just dividends. It can't be because it's not working. Um, I think a lot of a lot of what would be a success would be to have relevance on our own homeland. So what does that mean to have relevance on our homeland? It means that land ownership is not enough. At least the land ownership that we have is too small in the Tongass for that alone to provide us with what we need. We all want the same thing. We want healthy communities. We want young children to grow up in a community where they have hope, where they can see a future for themselves. They should not be less than. They should not be in a position where they don't have the same opportunities, the same dreams and wishes as other folks. That's not the way it should be. Um, now that's a very difficult success to reach is to have that next generation to grow up in a healthy community and want that. But that's what I'm going for. Uh, now, Sea Alaska just plays one part of that. We're going to need everybody on board to get to the place we want to be. All of our entities and all of our folks. And we're going to need people outside of our native world, too. We can't just think that we can, you know, make it without understanding that we have friends and neighbors and allies and everybody who understands, you know, and would want to be a part of that. Um, 
And I can tell you, success may be, as you can tell, harder to, to sum up in one word, but I can actually flip it over and say, what does failure look like? You know, I, I think a failure is, is a loss of our, our villages where the village I grew up in, Yakutat, no longer exists or, or there's no longer, uh, the people who have been on that land for 10,000 years can no longer make it there in their own homeland. Uh, to me, that's failure. Failure is the loss, the loss of our land with Sea Alaska. The Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was about land. If we lose that land, we've lost the foundation of who we are as a place-based people. So we have, we have some big goals. Um, I have some personally, I have very high places for us to reach. But if we're on that path, things are better. If we're not on that path, things aren't good. And I think we are on that path. So I'm excited about the years ahead. Sheesh, Morgan. Yeah. Excited to see where the future leads for our communities in your hands. Uh, Lisa, what is your vision for our communities, our shareholders in Sea Alaska? First, thank you everybody, because those were very inspiring words. Very, very thoughtful words. Um, I think it would be what it has always been for me. Um, my grandmother was a teacher and at her, in her life, that was the highest level a woman could go. Um, and I think that if they were with us today, I don't know what they would be doing because the sky was the limit to them through education, through all of the barriers that we no longer face. This time in history is very, 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 very um, different. I don't know how to say that in the best way, but there, it's a challenge. And I think that we do our best when we're challenged. And so I see, I see for my community, which means our native people, I wish the same things in Heidelberg as I do in every other village, as I do worldwide. I want our shareholders to feel a sense of pride. I want them to say, my ancestors fought for this, my grandmother, maybe that will be me, maybe that will be Angela someday, Barb maybe, Morgan, you'll be the Chana, Mike, Joe, you can all be the Chanas who were smart enough and creative enough and cared enough to believe that we could make this organization something for you to put your chin up high and to be proud about. Maybe you don't all live at home, but when you come home, it is the most beautiful feeling in the world. There's, it's indescribable. Um, if you have never been home, you need to make the trip home. It's a journey you need to be on. And I think that is the journey I see with Sea Alaska. And, and like I said, I've lived my journey and it has been giving back to my community. And I struggle still with getting people to collaborate, to understand that when we sit at the table together, we are so powerful. We are so incredibly powerful. And when we don't, we are wasting our precious time, especially right now. I think Sea Alaska would be so wise to have a one-year action plan and include in that your 100-year plan because we have to address what's coming at us. So for the future and my vision, I hope my grandes, I hope my granddaughter and my grandsons and all of them will walk with their head high and they won't live up to stereotypes that are not created by us, that our values will be inside of Sea Alaska, inside of the organizations, inside of education and health, so that we can collectively um, see the self-esteem that that those of us who stay very very cultured with the language with the practices i want all of our babies to feel that power and i don't care where you live i just want you to know that this is the goal of the organization when we move forward um it is with love and it is with good intent and i think about you angela with when you talk because one of our goals in heidelberg was we don't want it to be a place where you come home to get hurt. We want it to be a place you come home to heal. And so that's part of that vision for us. And that shared vision is 
it's everywhere. It's in every community. And collectively, I think we just have the right team. I, I think we're ready to go, but we do need the support of the people. We need to walk with you. We need to walk with the people, not above, not below. A leader walks with and listens. And I'm hoping that we get this message about who we really are. This is real. This is who we are. And I really do look forward to having the trust. That's the broken element. That's the thing that allows the green-eyed monster of jealousy to continue. And we have to address it. And so this group I'm among, I just feel like we could catapult it. You know, we, we've got all the right mixture of people, all the right thoughts, and the hearts are in the right place. So, yeah, that's my vision, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you, Barb. Thank you. How a job. I think, you know, you pinpoint exactly where CELAC is in terms of uh, setting ourselves apart as a head of Slingit Simshian Corporation versus any other Western corporation that could be out there. Because um, we could we could look exactly like any other corporation, but we don't because our values are intertwined in everything that we do. And I'm thankful for that. Um, our final question, or before closing thoughts. Um, and this stems from, I want to uh, quote uh, a beautiful sister of mine, Ayu Kasak, who said that when natives fight natives, someone else is winning. And when we think about that, this next question that leads into uh, ways that you're thinking about that exact phrase. But um, we have many layers of organizations in our Alaska Native communities. How can we achieve more unity among these organizations to better serve our people? And this question, we will start with Mike. Yeah, I mean, I, first of all, I, I agree wholeheartedly with the sentiment. Um, and, and I think it's, it's even much bigger than just, you know, among the, the Indians and, and natives in the Southeast in that um, there seems to be a competition of one way or another among the native communities, either who can be the most desperate and show the most need and therefore get, or who's the best and brightest and therefore uh, there's this, this false superiority. And, and I think both are, are really false gods, right? Um, and, 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 you know, I, I, I spent a lot of my time on a national level, um, in theory, in competition with other national organizations for a very small pot of pie. And, and when we actually come together as, as Alaska Native and Native Hawaiian and, and, and American Indian groups and demand a larger share of the pie in a unified voice, you do a lot better. Because otherwise, the people we're talking to are hearing us snip and bite at each other's ankles and, and drag each other down. And, it, and it, it plays poorly and shows poorly on all of us. So, um, you know, especially in Southeast where we have such a rich culture, we have such rich traditions of, of, you know, clan systems and, you know, everybody's related to everybody. And I know that sounds silly, but in Southeast, it's so true, right? I mean, you know, you, you can't go to a village without finding two aunties, seven cousins, and, you know, a whole slew of second cousins, right? And, 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 and so we are all the same family. And why are we, you know, and yes, family fights are the worst fights, but, you know, family loving is also some of the best, you know, meals and, and laughing and, and anything you'll ever get to, to come home to. And, and so we need to create that environment where we're coming home to a family dinner and we're sharing and we're all bringing something to the table. And, and you know, the, the, the laughing is at ourselves and not each other. And I think that I'm, ex I'm excited about being part of that. I'm, I've always been excited about being part of that and being from Southeast. I'm very excited about the possibility of being part of that as uh, a C Alaska Board of Directors member. And Ashish, Mike, ooh, I love the way you described that. I could just feel the warm hug and embrace of our communities at the dinner table with Angie. So appreciate that analogy, it's beautiful. Um, Morgan, how do you think we can achieve more unity among the diverse organizations in Southeast? I think that's a great question because it's one I have thought about and have been working on uh, for a long time because we are stronger together and we need each other. In many ways, it's getting back to one of our values that have always been the, 
the most important, and that's relationships. Um, you know, you have strong clan relationships, but at the same time, when you're part of a clan, you have your, your brothers and sisters, but you also have such a strong acknowledgement of the other clans, right? And that's what this is about, to say to other entities, we're all in this together. We have so much more in common um, than, than we have in differences. Um, you know, at the same time, but also giving us a break as well. I mean, uh, we're still in the middle of something and, and people feel the way they do for a reason. It, it's, it's not by accident. Uh, like, like, like Michael said, I mean, there has been the thought of scarcity because people have had to fight for what little they had, you know, and when you take away a lot from folks, you know, what do you leave them with? It's, it's, it, you have to rebuild and you have to do it in a positive way. You have to do it with love and caring. And sometimes you just got to start now. Sometimes you, we think we're always at the end of something. I think we're in the middle of something. We got to start now. We got to start today. We've got to start modeling for young people. What, what is acceptable behavior? You know, is it acceptable to 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 knock somebody down, you know, to 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 make to put yourself up by pushing others down? No, it's not. A lot of times people do that out of pain though. And you have to also have empathy with that. And and I and I I always remember that because you know, people have lived many lives. I tell I tell my mother and people of her generation, it's like you've lived three lives. You know, they've, they've been through so much. And, and my grandparents and great grandparents, they've been through so much in their lifetimes. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's up to us to understand that sacrifice and, and build on it. And I think now is the time to build by coming together. I really do. And I think it's a good question to ask because I need some help with uh, some, some solutions for it. I think it's, it's a tough one, and, but one that's worth really worth uh, digging into and, and figuring it out. Sheesh, Morgan. I think um, you were onto something when you were talking about returning to the, the respect we had for our opposites. Returning to our, to our ancestral ways of being might be the solution to moving forward. So I'm going to for that. Lisa, how do you think we can build more unity among our diverse organizations? That is like the million dollar question and the one we've wrestled with um, in my community here in Heidelberg. And what we did finally is try to set up a model for something that was very different. And we did, we set up this group called the United Front and we had a rule in there. Nobody could get paid, it was all volunteer. Um, so it was equal opportunity and all the entities came in and sat. And when we started getting the major players, the school, the city, the tribe, the nonprofit, um, and we have the corporation, um, the village corporation, but also sitting in that group. When I was chair six years ago, Sea Alaska came out knocking on the door and because of the unity, because of the, the village and the community being on the same page uh, when we would go after certain things, we were ready. And, the, and that is really the message is to, to, you've got to be big enough to sit at the table collectively and identify what you're best at going for. Um, the city had different needs than the school and it went from very minimal um, for each entity, the school now has a $14 million budget and it's because they worked with the tribe. It's because they did, it is a direct reflection. So we really like, we, when Sea Alaska came in, we just said, hey, Joe, hey, this is what we wanted. You know, they offered us and we said, we have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And this year, after probably six years, it, it speaks to the planning process it takes. You cannot uh, not have a vision. You got to know what you're wanting. Um, and what we wanted to do was help each other achieve what we needed. The one area I would say we're missing is the health 
I, I would say that we don't have a health person at the table and it's a very, very much a strong um, um, same problem they're having the, our health model has changed to a different model so it's it's it needs to come to the table we've got to have all the major players that's number one and then serve as a model in your community how did they do this how did they why don't we look at that and then why how does Heidelberg or how do communities reach out and get partners to come in and start to be part of the solutions so it's really a proactiveness and we have an attitude here that no one's going to help us but us nobody and so we have to have a strong sense of self about how we're going to collaborate and what can we benefit uh, from that collaboration so i think we're halfway there and we know how political we are as alaska native people there's so many layers that you just have to stay on top of understanding why that's so important you can't get apathetic you got to get active and get in there and work your way up through leadership and figure out how to do the best you can. That's why Sea Alaska was so high on my ideals about how you can work. We took what they offered us and we ran with it. And now it's a few years later, but it's going to benefit our community economically. And so I, I think we can serve as a model and you can take that model and you can use it in other communities. Others who have modeled after us, we ask them, do you have your school board on board with you? Do you have your city? All these check, 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 check. And if you don't, start placing people in those positions and start eyeballing who needs to be where. So planning, collaboration, it's doable. Um, and I, I actually see Sea Alaska doing it already. So I would hope that that relationship continues in any kind of uh, business ventures that we look at because um, when you see the resources being taken by everybody but our people, it's really, really disheartening. And so we have to figure out community quotas and how to bring some of the, the um, valley, culturally valued um, jobs. We have to bring value to it, just like the language. You have to bring value to it and then start, um, start building your economics. So thank you. That's a great question, Barb. How uh? How uh? For that sounds like Heidelberg's example and, and your experience with that would be a great addition to the, the boardroom. Uh, Dr. Michelle, what are your thoughts on how we can achieve more unity among the diverse organizations here in Southeast? Thank you. Um, I agree with what everybody said prior and um, so I won't spend too much time talking about what everybody else talked about but more about um, the listening and getting together on the same front, um, identifying the goals that are the same, and um, recognizing the tribes of what they are as they are the tribes and that we are the corporation. Um, we can bring the tribes on, the corporations on, we have the village corps, and you can also bring on the cities, all of that. And when you have everybody speaking together, um, one of the models that we, you know, that I've grown up with in the health field is the Alaska Native Health Board and where everybody can sit at the table and share what they need for Alaska and then when we go to DC we all have the same voice when we go to Juneau we have the same voice um, I think having a voice sharing what's needed and we all have similar needs the same thing with the National Indian Health Board or the National Congress of American Indians you know realizing our sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles that are down in California and Oregon and Washington and throughout the world we have um, shareholders, but where we have pockets of thousands, um, where are we coming together and giving them the voice? And so not just in Southeast connecting, but where do we have, like our health councils, can we have little councils that are the voices for them? And so they could share with us what's going on um, in their, region and so that we can help support and um, there's so much with the the funding that comes from different places and how money is moved around if we all are putting it in the same thing with the same purpose then money can move much more <laughs> we can get lots more done if we can be strategic and so um, as Lisa had said before is we need that you need your 100 year plan, you need your one year plan, you need your 25 year plan, and you need to get those down and everybody agrees on it, 
then you continue to work towards that goal. So if you don't have a goal and you don't have a vision and you don't have that vision laid out, then we, it, then everybody's always just like trying to scramble. And then you get into that, um, that I don't have so much. I have to tell everybody that I don't have so much because I need to still contain myself. If you know where we're going and everybody knows what you're doing, then it, people are okay with, okay, this is the next step. I will be okay because this is what they're going to do this year. And that we are able to move forward because people feel safe. People have stories of trauma. And I'm just going to like give a minute for that, or a second, because I don't only have two minutes to talk, but give a second for that. We have trauma in our histories. And people's feelings are real. And so when they come to the table, they're coming to fight. I, I'm in Anchorage, and people will say, oh, you are definitely clink it. <laughs> you know, and what does that mean? She's going to fight, you know. If you push us, if you push us, <laughs> we end up coming to the table to fight. But we don't want to do that. We're giving. I'll give you everything that we have. But when you feel like you're not getting enough, if you have that feeling, those are true feelings. And so I think with having meetings together, sharing with each other together, listening to each other's story, listening to what people's visions are, and we can realize that we are on the same front, and we're working on the same things together, that builds a community. And we're a community of Southeast Alaska people. Where, whether we live there now or not, that's where your roots are. So we can say, hey, this is where you came from. Now, where are we going? What do you want? What's your vision? Get the vision laid out and move forward. And I think that's how we're going to build those communities together and um, be able to move forward. So it's all about relationships. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and that's a, a beautiful statement. You know, more can be solved over a cup of coffee and a discussion than can be through fights throughout the years over pieces of paper. So I appreciate that. Uh, communication is definitely one of the keys there and trust. Um, now we're moving on to closing comments. Uh, so I want to thank you all for, for bearing with me as I have grilled you on your, your thoughts, but we all know, and as I said already, uh, we can learn a lot more from you uh, in conversation than we can from a piece of paper. And so I thank you all for taking the time to have this conversation with us today. Um, and so in closing comments, we'll start with Morgan. Well, I'm still still thinking about the words that were just said, Anishish, Angela, Lisa, Michael. i still thinking about that question um, because it is so difficult. How do we all work together? What role does the Alaska play? What would it mean if we did? Oh, man, it would just be like a new day to have all forces combined for the good of our people. And that's what it's about. Bottom line, it's about our people. Uh, you know, I think, you know, if we're not necessarily responsible for things that have happened, but we are responsible for our own healing. And that's something that's very difficult, easy to say, diff difficult, but it's been something that I've learned. Collectively, we are responsible for our own healing and we need to move forward uh because our, our our best days are still ahead and and it's about it's about our children and it's about our grandchildren um you know you think about the strength that we can we can gain and that we do collectively from our ancestors Ten thousand years or time immemorial more accurately you know we're just we're just right here a small blip in this timeline there will there will be there are many came before us and many will come after us and what role do we play now so you know i think about these things all the time um because you know we're just all of us just shareholders and we all have our own lives and we come from different places and but when you go into this position where you can make a difference i think and you can have an impact these, this is what you have to think about. Um, you know, I come from a modest background. I can still remember in Yakutat having no um, indoor plumbing. 
you know, I have a memory of that. And still today I live in a very modest lifestyle, like many of you worrying about the bills and how, you know, you're going to pay for something next month. And, um, but it's, it's not about me and my own personal plight. It's more about the group. You know, when, when I was elected, it became uh, very much aware that it was all almost 23,000 of us in our journeys and us, you know, and what decisions do you make now that are important, you know, and, and don't make irreversible decisions. You know, I think that's why even though language at, a, at some point, at some t times it's hard to kind of wrap your, your arms around. Well, what does it mean to lose the language? Well, I'm not sure, but I know if we don't act now, our children won't have that question to, to think about because if it's gone, it's going to be gone. That would be an irreversible decision to make. Um, so, you know, we have, we have a lot of, we, we can take on a lot <laughs> in this position. Uh, because there's a lot out there for us to work on. You know, we, we've got so much, uh, so many issues. And when you're a director, you hear them firsthand um, from, you know, homelessness to opioid addiction to struggling village economies, people who are struggling in our villages and they have to leave and they don't want to. Um, and you try to think, you know, how can you, how can you uh, positively impact that situation? But, you know, Sea Alaska is on a path now, which is, I think, should give all shareholders hope. It really should, because unlike other native corporations, Sea Alaska is in a position where it's being successful in an area outside of government contracting, outside of uh, natural resource extraction. Sea Alaska is getting very good at something, building expertise. We are we're building businesses around the health of our oceans. We're solving those tough climate change problems and we're successful at it. It's a very difficult thing to do, but I think it's a, a path that everyone can feel good, good about and also a path that we can get shareholders involved because we need our shareholders. That will be our strength. That will be our competitive edge in the world and that we will have shareholders because sh with that, you know, they bring, they bring all the strengths that they have to the company. And really, we could be a model. We can be a model for the rest of the world and how, how a corporation could be more than just a corporation, you know. And heck, we, we've, we've already changed that Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act more than 100 times to suit our needs. We'll continue to change it. It's something that we can take and use as a tool to help us get to where we need to go. Overall, I feel uh, really good that the, the strength of a board is that you bring together folks with diversity. And I, I see it here, uh, diversity uh, amongst, amongst uh, folks talking today. I've learned so much, diversity of thought. That's what we need moving forward. And I think that's what we got. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you. Um, we we I, all know that you have a. I think you said a, a short a short summary. I'm sorry, that was the short version. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, goodness, sheesh. We know you have a head for numbers, and um, <laughs> but it's it's important to know that you also see the the role that we all play as board members um, in the care for our communities, and that goes beyond just numbers on a page, right? That's our people. So thank you for that, Morgan. Uh, Lisa. We'll jump to you for final comments. Uh, I would say yank anut lang hidang, and what I'm saying is what you've said is correct. Everything you said is right on the money, and um, I think that I think that none of us have underestimated um, how much responsibility comes with these positions. None of us have underestimated that at all. I think a lot of good thought has gone into it. And I think my one concern was that people really got to know our shareholders, got to understand what this process was about. I want the world to know that this was a very, one of the strongest vetting processes I've ever been through. 
And I really felt like it was so professional and a really high level of integrity. Um, and I'm proud of that. I really like that. And I know that I'm sitting with other individuals who actually do think about these things with a good heart and a good way. And it, and it is the hard work. Um, oftentimes like what Morgan says, you know, there's so many problems and there's so many issues and, um, oftentimes people want a yes or no answer. And as we know, as we get more educated and as we learn these systems, there is no simple answers. What I do know is that we have learned some of these systems, whether it's the legal system, whether it's the educational system. And I would hope someday that we take ownership like the Maoris and the Hawaiians have, and they take ownership of those systems. And so when we develop, when we talk about mentoring, I would like to see a mentor in every high level position, give them five years to train the best that we have and place them into those positions. That was what the Maoris did. They took ownership and I studied that a lot because it really, really caught my eye. And when I went to Hawaii, we looked at the, they had the little baby schools and I was so overwhelmed. But when I got to the university, I never even allowed myself to dream that big until I got there that day. And I thought, wow, they don't let anything stop their vision and their dreams. Every word in their university was in their language. Instruction was in their language. I never thought like that until I met those people. And so this board that I hope someday that I get to sit with and have these conversations will have the same ability to dream big and to go for the go for the sky, go for the limits, because I really truly believe we haven't allowed ourselves to do that. We've gone and gotten educated and we've gone home and some of us have fought the battle right up front here while others are fighting it at a different place. But we have to be able to dream big and we have to be able to stay in that vision. We have to stay focused. And so I'm honored and I'm, I'm so pleased to really get to know my teammates and to get to know uh, the working relationship Joe and Barb have. And, and thank you for taking the time to sh allow us to share who we are. I think we're all warriors, whether we're language warriors or business warriors, whatever warriors we are. And I think that's our spirit. So if we take our spirit and we put it into our vision, there's nothing we cannot accomplish. So Hawaja, thank you for your for having this happen for us today. It means so much to me. Jahawa. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually said, put our warrior spirit and everything. <laughs> it could go really far with that. Um, back to Michelle. Any final comments? Yeah, I just want to say I just I'm feeling this emotion of, of just being blessed right now. And I just want to thank everybody on the team for putting your name in the hat, for going through the process and, and being here. And I want to thank the Sea Alaska Board um, of Directors and their vetting process that they've taken this seriously. Um, dream big. I, I mean, as Lisa said, I was like, oh, those are right out of my mouth. <laughs> Um, dream big and everybody's like oh my gosh you always have this big vision and I do and I have a big vision and we go for it um, one of the things my dad would say to us all the time growing up was can't doesn't live here you figure it out and that's why I'm here that's what I'm here to do um, to be your voice to build your relationships with you um, to help your children's children's um, have the ability to live a life, to be able to have food, to have water, to have housing, to be able to be connected to their culture and that they can be proud of who they are and that you can be proud of who you are. Um, I want to be that person. And uh, as I said in the very beginning statement, um, I'm here in service in servant leadership. And so I do this for our people and as I'm saying all these faces of all these amazing mentors from 
all over Southeast from Oregon State University, all of these mentors who always raised me up. And I feel like right now they're just right behind me and saying, you've got this, you can do this. And we, we have your back and, and it's so I can help you all, um, have the best opportunities that you can have. And, and so I want to be that leader for you. And so hopefully I'll be able to meet you and talk to you when we're able to do that in person and not virtually, but I do want to be here for you. I want to be that uh, leader for you to support you to lift you up and that's what I'm here for that's what I'm doing this for and uh, goodness Jish, um, thank you so much this is the endorsed team there's Jish for that um, something came to mind when you were talking you know there's uh, I was thinking about uh, Byron Malat and how he was so amazing at creating this path for us, but it's now our turn to, to pave it for future generations so that it's a permanent path for our people. So how are we going to sheesh for that? Um, Michael, closing comments? Yeah, um, first of all, I just love to echo what both Lisa and Angela have said. I'm just so humbled and honored to even be considered um, to be on the board of Alaska and, and um, thankful for the vetting process. Though I don't think I was very thankful when I was going through it, I'm very thankful for it now. Um, I'm a middle child and I'm an Alaska native and so I'm twice invisible. And so I, my entire life I've been jumping up and down trying to get noticed and, and trying to get attention. And, and I, I think that's, uh, you know, as, as, as a native people, that's kind of how we feel in general, right? Um, but it also builds character, right? And and it, it makes you understand when you're not heard, and 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 that you need to listen. And and I and I would say this about um, there's a there's a comment that came out of the first Obama administ Obama administration that they held lots of listening sessions, but they never heard anybody, right? And I think that that's how I've always felt about the Board of Sea Alaska that that they tell us they're listening a lot but I don't think we ever felt like we were heard. And I think that this new process and the people who are here in this room with me today are people who are listening and that they know that the shareholders will be heard. And, and that's, that's kind of my, my, my feeling about this, this board is that this board is, is starting to hear their shareholders and that's a good thing. I, I do have one more thought that, that uh, you know, our, our, Kiowa cousin and Scott Mamaday, he was on my board of directors for a while, but he has this great quote that I think really kind of typifies where we are as Alaska Native people right now. And it goes like this, they, ha they have assumed the names and gestures of their enemies, but they have held on to their own secret souls. And in this, there is a resistance and an overcoming and a long awaiting. And I think as Alaska Native people, you know, we've, we've, this has been our resistance but now it's time for our overcoming, and then now it's time for the reward for our long awaiting. And I'm excited to be part of that. So, Gunashesh to my the rest of the team, Gunashesh to the board for selecting me, and uh, I I'm excited to be in this process. Thank you today, Barbara, as well. Thank you, Michael, for those closing comments. They're beautiful words, and never I, I haven't heard that quote before. Appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, turn it back to Joe for for closing thoughts. Oh, goodness, sheesh. It's in, so inspiring. Uh, you know, I, I think the job of any, any leader is to be able to walk away comfortably because you know you have a team of people that are capable and working well together. Uh, and, and because you've, you've played your part in, um, in, in developing something that's, that's bigger than you. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to pat myself here at all. Uh, it's Barbara uh, is in her first term on the board. And, and I think that should instill a lot of confidence in uh, our shareholder base to, to see where we're going. Um, and the success we've arrived at is just a beginning. Uh, and it's been a long time in the making with a lot of hard work. Uh, a lot of teamwork 
and this group here, you, you've, you actually haven't had the chance to shake hands in person. We're, we're doing it virtually, um, but we've been able to pull together a team. Uh, and, and that is our competitive advantage as native people. This virtual space is a native space now. Uh, our future is a native future. And all of you are grounded in this place that uh, all of us cherish and, and call home. And, and you're, you're, you're working hard day in and day out without Sea Alaska to improve the lives of our people. Whether or not you get on the board, uh, you know, you've got proud families that are there with you, appreciating everything you do. You all have children, some grandchildren that, that, that are thankful for your service. Uh, so it's just, it's just exciting. To, to that is our advantage uh, as native people to, to embrace